Okay, hello everybody. This talk is about a neural network based on device learning anomaly detector for edge devices. Actually, edge AI often means prediction tasks on small edge devices. But in this talk, we will focus on learning or training on small edge devices, which is called on device learning. We are working on anomaly detection in real environments such as factories, data centers, robots, home electronics, security, and so on. In real world anomaly detection, the issue is normal or anomaly patterns vary depending on the given environment and the situation. In real environments, noise patterns fluctuate depending on location of sensors, status of noise sources, and so on. Also, normal patterns vary with time because of temperature, workload, human behavior, and so on. So, environment and the status are changing. It is not easy to prepare training datasets beforehand. Again, the biggest issue when applying AI to industries is to prepare accurate training datasets beforehand. In order to address this issue, our approach is on-device learning that combines online learning and unsupervised anomaly detection. This is unsupervised, so labeled training data is not needed. Also, this is on-site learning without offline learning phase. The basic concept of our approach is very simple. First, anomaly detector is deployed in an environment. Second, normal patterns, including noises, are learned at the environment in the initialization step. Then, unsupervised anomaly detection based on online sequential learning. Let me compare the on-device learning with the typical deep learning, which is based on back propagation and stochastic gradient methods. In such offline learning, the training datasets should be prepared beforehand. Then, the predictor is trained with the training datasets by using high-performance computing devices such as GPGPUs. On the other hand, in our approach, in our on-device learning, the test data and the training data are the same. That is, uh, every time a new data comes, prediction and uh, sequential training are performed for the anomaly detection in the case of on-device learning. This figure illustrates the baseline technology for the online sequential learning in a deployed environment. For the online sequential learning and unsupervised anomaly detection, we are using OSELM, which is Online Sequential Extreme Learning Machine Algorithm. And in our paper, it is combined with the autoencoder which is a dimensionality reduction algorithm of neural networks. It is used for the unsupervised anomaly detection. Also, we optimize these two strategies to significantly reduce the computational cost. So, our contribution is a low-cost hardware design of online sequential learning and unsupervised anomaly detection. More specifically, 
OSELM enables one-shot learning. In a typical training phase of neural networks, weight parameters are iteratively optimized with backpropagation and stochastic gradient methods. But on the other hand, ELM variants employed one-shot learning that analytically computes the weight parameters, not iterative tuning. And this OS ELM is a sequential version of ELM variants. That is, data I plus one is run using intermediate training result of data I for the online sequential learning. Again, it is uh, combined with autoencoder, which is a dimensionality reduction algorithm of neural networks, so that uh, we can realize on-device learning for unsupervised anomaly detection. However, one issue is a high computational cost for on-device learning that has to run every incoming data at runtime on small embedded devices. So, the second idea is about the cost reduction for enabling on-device learning. The bottleneck of our approach is a pseudo-inverse of matrix that requires SVD or QR decomposition cores. This formula describes the computational cost of the sequential learning. I will omit the detail about this cost model, but the crucial part is this k cubed. And k is batch size. Typically, batch size k should be large enough in order to exclude outliers in a batch. For example, please assume K is 5, a batch with 5 items like this figure. In this case, uh, an orange is an outlier among them. So, this outlier should be removed, and the remaining 4 items are used for the sequential training. When k is reduced to 1, the pseudo-inverse operation is replaced with reciprocal operation so that the SVD or QR decomposition cores can be eliminated and the hardware cost is significantly saved. However, when batch size k is set to 1, outliers cannot be excluded in a batch. So outliers will be run as normal and the prediction becomes unstable. And in order to overcome such instability of prediction, we introduce a stable training method that automatically rejects outliers for running while adapting to change points or concept drift. The third extension is about accuracy of the anomaly detection. We introduce a forgetting mechanism to forget all the correct data and follow the concept changes quickly. Actually, the normal samples may become anomalies as time goes by. As shown in this figure, at the beginning, Oranges appear frequently, but later, apples become majority. In this case, by using the forgetting mechanism, effects of older samples like oranges are gradually reduced every time a new sample comes, so that we can follow such concept drift quickly. In this paper, we propose a forgetting mechanism that can coexist with a simplified computational method proposed in this paper. In addition, 
an ensemble approach is used to improve the accuracy when multiple normal patterns exist in a deployed environment. The basic idea is to create a pattern-specific instance or on-device learning core for each normal pattern. Detail about the multi-instance on-device learning was proposed in this paper. So, uh, this is an overview of the on-device learning algorithm proposed in this paper. As a baseline, one-shot learning and the dimensionality reduction for online sequential learning and unsupervised anomaly detection. And in order to reduce the computational cost for edge devices, the third inverse operation is replaced with reciprocal computation. And a stable learning method is used to compensate this simplified computation. Regarding accuracy, a forgetting mechanism is used. Also, multiple instances of the proposed on-device learning algorithm are used to maintain accuracy when multiple normal patterns exist. The algorithm is implemented with Python language, and it is also ported, imported to C language and Baylog HDL language. As a software, it is implemented on various platforms such as Raspberry Pi Zero, a low-cost CPU board with a single-core ARM processor. Currently, the proposed algorithm is implemented on FPGAs by using high-level synthesis using C language. In this paper, uh, it was implemented on small-sized FPGA like uh, Xilinx Pink FPGA board like this figure. Our goal is to implement learning AI chip integrated with sensors so that the learning AI chip can be attached to human body and or environment. A low-cost FPGA design using Xilinx Pink FPGA board was demonstrated in FCCM 2019 demo night. And in this demo, Vibration pattern of a rotating machine is run at runtime to detect unusual patterns. And then, air spray is applied to the fan. Then, anomaly pattern due to the air spray is detected. Also, the speed of the fan is changed by hand, and then it is detected as anomaly. Let me show you an implementation of the FPGA prototype. The target device is Xilinx Zinc FPGA, so it has a CPU part and a programmable logic part. The left-hand side is a CPU part, and right-hand side is a FPGA part. And predict module and the sequential training modules are implemented in the FPGA part as a dedicated circuits. The other functions are executed on the CPU part. For example, this ARM CPU collects sensor data from accelerometer, and the FFT is executed to get a frequency spectrum. The frequency spectrum is transferred to, to the FPGA part as an input data. Also, the CPU part sends uh, commands to the FPGA part, such as uh, prediction command and uh, sequential training command. Input data, like frequency spectrum, is transferred from CPU side DRAM to the FPGA via DMA transfer. Then, the prediction result or loss value is returned back to, to the CPU part. Some parameters, such as initial weight values and forgetting ratio, are configured by the CPU part. The bottom figure 
illustrates more detail about the prediction and the sequential training modules implemented in the FPGA part. The input data is stored in input buffer via a 64-bit input data bus. Some weight parameters, such as alpha, beta, p, and b, these weight parameters are maintained in the weight buffer. These weight values are used in prediction module and the sequential training module. Also, uh, these weight values are updated by the sequential training module. And the prediction result or loss value is computed by this prediction module. And the loss value is returned back to the CPU part via a 32-bit output data bus. This is the evaluation result in terms of uh, area and uh, latency on this FPGA board. The operating frequency of uh, the programmable logic part is 100 MHz, and the VBARDO HLS was used for the design and implementation. The resource utilization is uh, less than 54%, and the latency for Sequential training and prediction is both less than one millisecond. This result is much faster than the software implementations. Again, this is just an FPGA-based prototype. Our goal is to implement running AI chip integrated with the sensors. Okay, this is a summary of this talk. Again, one of the biggest issues when applying AI to industries is to prepare accurate training datasets beforehand. And our approach is on-device learning that combines online sequential learning and unsupervised anomaly detection. The on-device learning can learn incoming data at runtime. So the anomaly detection can be customized or personalized for a given environment. A low-cost FPGA design using Xilinx pink FPGA board was demonstrated in this paper. But currently, we are working on the chip design of the on-device learning chip. That is, we will implement on-device learning chips that can attach a human body and or environments. We are currently working on on-device learning for federated learning, reinforcement learning, recurrent neural network core, and uh, multi-instance design. And this paper is a basis of these new topics. Again, thank you very much for listening.